Welcome to this uh, video. And in this video, I want to explain a bit more how we can construct new count distributions by uh, putting together a discrete mixture of existing count uh, distributions. So the target variable, the response variable we have in mind here is a variable, let's say n, which represents the number of events, in our case, typically, the number of claims uh, reported over a certain period of time, which I will leave unspecified here. So we're looking at the number of claims uh, reported. We're looking at a frequency uh, model and the relevance of building such models when thinking about risk models in, in insurance could be, for instance, that you want to use this uh, expected number of claims in a pricing model, for instance. So it's relevant in a pricing context when you put the uh, risk premium together as the expected number of claims um, multiplied with the expected claim severity, say, right? So it's important in insurance and in non-life insurance particularly to be able to construct uh, suitable uh, distributional models for the uh, frequency of the insured event. And a very uh, standard model to use is the Poisson distribution with parameter lambda, where the expected value of n would then be equal to the variance of n would be equal to lambda. So that's a very particular assumption of this uh, Poisson distribution, and we call that equidispersion, right? So equidispersion, that means e uh, expected value mean is equal to the variance in this case, um, represented by the parameter lambda. And this might be quite uh, restrictive in certain applications or in certain or to model certain data sets. So that's why we want to put together more uh, flexible distributions. And one way to do this is by using the recipe of putting a discrete mixture together. So more flexible distributions are necessary. And the way how we're going to do that with a discrete mixture is we're going to specify the following recipe for the probability function of n. We're going to put um, a mixture together with the following specification. Right. So what you recognize here are uh, new components in this uh, mixture, right? so new components in the discrete uh, mixture. Every um, P that you see over here is a valid count distribution on its own. So the PI is a count distribution and is using parameters specified by the vector Xi i. So with, a, with parameters represented by Xi i. And then these cues that you see over here, these are the so-called weights, right? So that is the recipe, and that's how we construct this more flexible count distribution out of some existing count distributions denoted here with the piece. So first question we want to ask ourselves is this discrete mixture creating a well-defined, so a valid probability function. And in order to verify that, we know that the probabilities, uh, the probability that n is equal to k should be positive, and these probabilities should sum to 1. If I sum them over all possible outcomes that this k can take. So that's the first thing I want to uh, verify. And I'm going to examine this in the following ways. I'm going to replace the... Um, the probability uh, function over here, the probability that n is equal to k, I'm going to replace that with the recipe that we put together on the previous sheet. So that's going to be p1 evaluated in k up to q nu times p nu evaluated in k, because that was the discrete mixture that I put together on the previous sheet. Right? Now if I examine what's going to happen, if I take the sum over all k, so I can work with that, I'll get the sum over k of p1 uh, 
like this. And because these are valid and legitimate count distributions, each of those sums will equal one. Because what we're doing there is we're taking the sum over all uh, the probabilities, uh, evaluated in all the possible values that k can take. And since these are legitimate probability functions, we're ending up with the sum of the weights. So condition to make this a well-defined probability function is that the sum of the q's, the sum of the weights, will be equal to 1. So each of our q's should take a positive value to make sure that in the combined expression here I get positive values. And so all of the probability functions will take a positive value, but the q's um, should also do that. And the sum of the q's should be equal to 1 in order to make sure that my discrete mixture creates a legitimate probability function. Now we're going to zoom in on uh, one famous example of such a discrete mixture, and that is the zero-inflated Poisson distribution. So this is the zero-inflated Poisson distribution. So first of all, why would you consider such a mixture? Well, often if you look at empirical data, huh, if you would visualize how many of my policyholders report, for instance, zero claim, one claim, two claims, three claims, four claims, and so on, then you'll typically get a count distribution empirically like this. So you typically see for a lot of your policyholders that they, of course, will not report, will not be involved in the insured event over a certain period of exposure. And sometimes it's difficult to capture the, um, the probability mass at zero with a regular Poisson distribution. And that's the reason why you may want to inflate the probability of observing the outcome zero and look at the so-called zero inflated Poisson distribution. So this is a discrete mixture. And what we're going to use is the following, are the following two uh, distributions. So P1 is going to be the so-called um, uh, degenerate distribution or Dirac distribution. This is a distribution that has all its probability mass at the outcome zero. And then the P2 is going to be the uh, plain Poisson distribution with parameter lambda. So that's a regular Poisson distribution. So we've got two legitimate uh, count distributions. We're going to give each of them a certain weight, say Q1 and Q2, and put them together to construct a discrete mixture. Of course, this Q1 and Q2 should sum to 1, so it's more interesting to write the weights as Q and 1 minus Q, because in that way, we guarantee that they will uh, sum to 1. We assume the Q to take a positive value and have uh, well-defined weights then in our construction. So let's look into the resulting probability function. So what would be the probability that n is equal to 0 in this uh, zero-inflated uh, Poisson model? Yeah. So if I would evaluate this probability, what I'm going to do is take q times the probability to see an outcome 0 in model 1, plus 1 minus q times the probability to see an outcome 0 in model 2. Now, of course, model 1 is 0 with probability 1. So I get just q here. And in model 2, I'm working with the regular Poisson distribution. So the probability to see a 0 there is the exponential of minus lambda. Why is that? Uh, why is this last step true? Because in a regular Poisson with parameter uh, lambda, the probability to see an outcome equal to k would be the exponential of lambda, minus lambda, sorry, lambda to the power k divided by k factorial. So if the k is equal to zero, uh, then you'll get the exponential of minus lambda. So that is the uh, probability to see outcome zero in the zero inflated Poisson. And I've got this expression for my probability function if k is equal to zero. So that's what the zero inflated Poisson 
is uh, or is is using uh, is about. If we continue in this way and try to write down the probability that n is equal to k in this zero inflated Poisson model with a k that is strictly larger than zero, then how do we get this probability? That will be q times the probability to see outcome k in model 1, plus 1 minus q times the probability to see outcome k in model 2. Now, of course, model 1 is the degenerate component, so the probability to see outcome k there, with k being different from 0, is 0. So I get 0 plus 1 minus q times the probability to see an outcome k in the plain Poisson model is the exponential of minus lambda times lambda to the power k divided by k factorial. So this is what I get for my uh, probability function in the zero inflated Poisson if k is strictly larger than zero. So taking the two expressions together, I've got this expression for my probability function if k is larger than zero, right? Now, as a last step, what I would like to do is in this zero inflated Poisson with parameter lambda, could we then easily express the expected value of n, for instance? So let's do that as an exercise. We'll take then the sum over all possible values that your random variable n can take. We take this outcome k, multiply it with the probability that, as in, that n is equal to k in the zero inflated Poisson model. Now, of course, if you look at this summation, if the k is equal to zero, then this term is going to drop from my sum expression. It's going to contribute zero, right? So I can reduce this to sum over k strictly larger than zero of k multiplied with the probability that n is equal to k. So if I then plug in my expression from my zero inflated Poisson, I've got 1 minus q times the exponential of minus lambda, lambda to the power k divided by k factorial. And if I rearrange this expression, I can put the 1 minus q in front, and then I'm left with the expected value of the plain Poisson, the vanilla Poisson distribution with parameter lambda. Why is that? Because I'm summing then the values of k multiplied with this Poisson um, probability, and I'm summing over all k's strictly larger than zero, but that's also what I would do uh, if I would calculate the expected value of the Poisson, because once again, the term where k is equal to zero is not contributing to this summation. So because I know that the expected value of my regular Poisson, it's just lambda, I'll eventually get this expression for the expected value for n if n follows a zero inflated Poisson. And that's also what you see on uh, sheet uh, 55 in the part on uh, frequency uh, modeling. So what did we do in the video? We explained the general recipe to construct a discrete mixture of count distributions. Then we motivated why you could potentially be interested in uh, working with the zero inflated Poisson distribution, because you want to inflate the probability mass at zero. And then we went through uh, the derivation of the probability function and in the expected value of this uh, zero-inflated uh, Poisson.